How's it going? Welcome to the Director DMX tutorial here. And uh, it took me a little while to get this out because there were some bugs with the, the DMX interface in Director, but those have since been squashed. And so now I would uh, recommend you upgrade your Director software if you haven't. Go to the website and download the newest version. It has a whole bunch of fixes and some new features and things like that. So all that aside, let's get to learning about the DMX stuff. Now, beforehand, when you buy, a, chances are you're gonna buy some brand name uh, fixture of some sorts and it's gonna come with instructions, all right? Make sure you read through the instructions. It will tell you how to set up your device, how to set your DMX channel, how to get to the DMX channel and all that stuff. So uh, make sure you read the instructions. Uh, what I have here is I have a American DJ Mega Tripar profile is what this guy is called. So uh, I'm going to, we're going to be going over uh, the, how it, all this does here, how to set it up and how to run it. And uh, you'll get to see it happen in real time. But for that though, we're going to go over the interface. So uh, you go over to show and you go over to add DMX slave. <laughs> there it is. And you have a handful of different things that you can choose from. You have, uh, you know, Servo DMX, and these are all Fright Ideas things here. You can use different controllers as DMX slaves. So you have one controller as the master, and you have the other one telling the other one what to do. So, but we're not going to go through any of that right now. That's a little more, uh, that's a little more advanced. Right now, this is kind of the basic. So you're going to go DMX fixture like this, and this will open up this interface here. And as you'll see, uh, you, have t you have a fixture list. You have included and you have mine. Mine is where you can set up your own your your own fixtures uh, if let's say you get something generic that may not or you get something that necessarily isn't brand name and you just and it has instructions and how to set up your own stuff which we'll do in a little bit but uh usually you're just going to buy something like american dj right here and your device name here is a handful of presets that are already in the in the in the director interface and if there's something that you want uh shoot a email over to fright ideas and i'm sure they'll be happy to add this in in a future uh, update so uh you can see here we have all sorts of things chave uh, elation froggy's fog gantum generic uh, haunted house creations a bunch of different uh, companies here and uh, even Fright Ideas and Fright Props, which you know, uh, which are two different companies. Fright Props carries Fright Ideas. So, you know, Fright Props you here have like flame shooters, but you also have these, which are these DMX decoders, 24 channel, nine channel, three channel. And what these are, these let you control a lot of different things basically uh from here you can you can control all a bunch of different lights and some effects and some other things through the dmx decoder so uh, you can look into that and play with those down the line but uh for our for what we're doing today uh we're going to be messing with uh an american dj the tripar profile but this is the plus so the profile that isn't the the, the pro that the, the profiles profile is not in the profile list, so we're going to make our own. But first, I want to go over a few things here that you should need you should know about. Um, you'll notice here that it says channel right, and uh, you, it jumps from one to four. Well, the reason is this right here, this uh, channel type, uh, this one channel represents all three channels. All right, and uh, I'll show you I'll show you what that means here in a minute. But let's go to the help file because the help file will tell you more. So you'll see here, as usual, this tells you what's happening uh, in this device image. You can set up your own image here and things like that and all this stuff. But let's talk about the channels grid here. So this channel is telling you what channel that is. And uh, the name, you can name what it does right here. And now your channel type is where things might get confusing for you. So you have line with fill, uh, which is how you'll see a lot of the servos and the dimmable lights. Basically, it's a line with a color infill here. And then, of course, you have line, which is the same thing. It just is a colored line instead of a fill line. I find this easier to, to see what's going on. But, you know, obviously, you can do whatever you want. Uh, you have here function cell. Uh, certain fixtures, as it says here, have uh, have a, like built-in functions uh, that only happen in certain like levels. Uh, so like, let's say you have a line here and the line was set to, uh, uh, like 30, 32, the value was 32. Well, 32, it would fade in, right? Uh, but you can do it as a cell, which is like this, like that. You can do it as a, these different colored functions and you'll choose the color and stuff like that. And I'll, I'll go over a little bit with that here in a little while. 
Uh, you have the uh, function line, which is basically the same thing. It's just done with a filled in line like that. And you have the RGB cell, which is what we have going on here. And you have the on off cells, which is for like uh, eight bits and a DMX channel. Uh, I've, I rarely have to mess with this one, but there might come a time when you need to. Uh, and of course, all this other stuff here that you shouldn't have to mess with, uh, like value and mask, unless it's absolutely necessary. So let's take a look at one of these uh, more up close. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, this fixture here. So we're going to go and we're going to select, we're going to select, and now you'll notice it's popped this up here. Uh, you'll notice we have this fourth channel, which is for ultraviolet light, and this is a fill with lines. So right now the UV would be off, but if I did this, it would dim it, it would go from off to full brightness at 255, and then it would fade back down uh, all the way to there like this. Now, that's not exactly what I would call the smoothest transition right there. So what you can do is you can use your editing function and go here, right click, hit transition, and it'll give you a much smoother uh, transition across like that so that that you don't have to worry so much about having a steady hand to do that stuff so uh, but we don't have to worry about that right now but that's what the fill with line is right there uh, and so let's look at this this is the uh, this is the RGB cell so this controls your red your green and your blue as as you can see there by the little overlay so let's say I'm gonna I'm gonna click on when I click on here whenever you click on any of these it'll highlight the row so I'm clicking here, highlights the entire row, right click, and now I can set the color. You'll see here. And I can do this. And so let's say I well, this will be green. So now this entire row is going to be green. But let's say about halfway through, I want it to fade to red. All right, well, I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna do this, do my select, set color, go to red. And now, what would happen is this would be green and then this would be a sharp change to red. You'll see there represented as the overlay. But what if I wanted it to be a gradual fade? Okay, well, now you're going to make a selection right here and you're going to hit transition. And now you'll see how that is a very smooth gradient going from green to red. So that's how you would do the three uh, RGB line color thing here. So that's, that's kind of the basis of that there. Uh, let's let's uh, change the device here. We'll right click this. Oh, by the way, uh, you'll notice here this says DMX9, and that is the DMX channel on your device. And each device ha well sh needs to have its own unique address. And again, the instructions you get with it will go over all that stuff. Uh, you can set this manually. It's this is set uh, to automatic to do the channels automatically. So, you know, you don't use something you're not supposed to, but if you unclick this, it will say, once you switch back to manual, you, you cannot go back to automatic. So you sure you want to continue. So uh, once you do that, you have to manually set all the DMX here. Uh, but if uh, you right click and go, how do I set this address? It has a little pop-up that tells you how to do it and what to do like this. And so if some, some things have a dip switch and some things have like an LCD screen, uh, just so you know. All right, so we're going to change the device here. Uh, we're going to actually uh, go over to this right here. So you have the included, but now we're going to go and kind of make our own like this here. So you're going to go to mine. You're going to hit new. And we're going to do ADJ for American DJ. Device name Tripar like that. Model number and notes aren't necessary unless you just want to put those in there for yourself. You can do a thumbnail right here and if you just want to see the photo of it. If you have a whole bunch of your own that you need to scroll through so you can see what they are, uh, that's good to have there. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to play with a couple of these different things here, right? And uh, the first one is going to be function cell, just so you can see similar to what we did over here. With this, I just kind of want to show you uh, what this would be. So, uh, because in this here, let's so let's say you had uh, the one macro here. So you'll see here that you've got all these different things. You've got between one through seven, eight to fifteen, it does these things. And what you will able to do. So we're gonna here. It says uh, click to view edit. Oh, sorry, I gotta put a name in this thing. So we're gonna put macros because these are color macros there we go like that so uh, the value here is between one and seven it doesn't matter uh, which one it is because one through seven doesn't matter what the number is it'll do the same thing okay 
So I'm just going to put five. Was why not? And we're going to put Amber. Now we're going to do the same thing down here. And again, the number just has to be between eight and 15. So we're going to do 10. And then uh, what is this? That's another, it's another Amber. So we'll say medium Amber like that. And I can choose the color here. I can go in and do a, uh, a yellow for that. And then I can define custom colors. I can make that a medium yellow, whatever that means. Uh, <laughs> so uh, let's do something actually a little more extreme. Let's say I only need, I know for sure I only need like, I only need this one, this one, and uh, let's say primary blue, right? So I'm gonna change that to 180 like this. And that's a blue, I don't need that. And we'll do that. Close. Oh, the, sorry. Oh, the last value. Ah, the last value in the list must be 255. All right. So 255, uh, which would be white. So we'll make sure we do that. Forgot about that. Right. And we'll set that there and close. There you go. So now I hit save, hit select select and now it'll have changed this to here and you'll see it has our different things different colors and you can move these around uh, similar to how we did before so let me select this and now i'm going to do that so now that's at zero because that's you know amber right there but uh let's say i wanted to do uh let's let's do the uh da -da 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 -da. where is it Cursor function, there it is, uh, blue, like that. Sorry, wrong thing, there we go. So now, I was doing, sorry, hit, hit the, I was hitting the wrong thing. Uh, so now my cursor is blue, like this. And now I can change my cursor to white, which would then change it to white. And uh, so you see all the different types of, so you can do that. Now I, I'm not actually, I'd never mess with this to be fair. Uh, I will, I'm just gonna warn you right now, this is not something that I tend to mess with. Uh, so there you go, that's the function. Uh, it doesn't appear that you, uh, you get to do, uh, you can't do crossfading on this. This is just binary. This is like this color, this color, this color, this color, right? So now if I was to play this, it would be blue, it'd be amber, it'd be this, back to blue, then white, then back to amber. So that is how you would deal with that if you were doing a one channel uh, like this. But that is not fun, is it? So we're gonna change the device. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to uh, DMX device editor like this. This way I can just come up here and mess with this without having to do all the other stuff. So we're gonna edit this uh, guy. We're gonna change this from a function cell and we're going to do line with fill like this. All right, so now we're gonna we're gonna now we're going to make uh, our three and four channel set up here. All right, so this is going to be red. I'm gonna make that red like this. Now I'm gonna add green. I'm gonna add another one. I'll just add another one. Just get get it done. And this one will be blue. And this one is our master dimmer for the four channel. Uh, and we'll make that, I don't know, irritatingly pink. There we go. Uh, so now this is the four channel setup uh, for the tripar like this. So if I save this, I close that. And now I can change the device to that. And now this is our setup. You'll notice this kind of just gives starts with its own random animation here. Uh, if I click here, uh, it highlights the whole row, and I can hit delete and make that go all the way down. Escape will turn that off like that. I like I like to use keyboard shortcuts. All right, so I have my FlexMax hooked up to Director via a Director Connect module, and uh, if you don't have one of those, you should look into getting it because it lets you control things in real time which really helps with troubleshooting and you can uh, control and animate things a lot easier. So 
Right now, uh, you'll see in the bottom corner of the screen, uh, I have my DMX fixture. And right now, it's very dark because I, nothing's happening right now. And I have it set for three channels. It is currently set for a three channel, which is red, green, and blue. The dimmer is, is not involved. And so what's going to happen is I'm going to take this and we're going to have it go from zero up to full and then back down again like this. And as I showed you before earlier, we're going to transition that so it is nowhere near as harsh and, and jagged and weird like that. So now if I play, what you'll see is the light will fade up and get very, very bright. And then the light will fade back down again and turn off. So just like that. Hey, look at that. Neat, huh? Uh, and now if I scrub this, you'll see it actually does everything that I want it to do right here. Same thing. Uh, there's also down here, you have this thing that is the virtual console, which pops up here, which actually lets you also mess with uh, stuff just kind of to, to get v values and things where you want them. Uh, this kind of lets you just manually run and do things. So if you can sit here and kind of dial in and go, okay, that's 93. Uh, that's, uh, that's 255. That's 55. So you kind of let you go where you want and you can also control and play stuff and you'll see how things work. So, but right now we're just messing with these things. So, so let's say as this fades out, I want this to fade up like that. And then I want that to shut off almost immediately and then blue to, uh, to pick up where that left off like this. So now we're going to do this and now you'll see that that's going to get a little red green like that and then that becomes green and then fade just kicks right onto blue. Like there's a little bit of a of a little bit of a weird step there. So you can see that it's doing some weird stuff, but uh I can if I wanted to I can make that not a thing. Uh if I if I uh, did this, I can hit delete and that'll just make it a sharp step. So now it's just an immediate s a switch over like that. And of course, by uh, mixing the colors and things like that, and just to changing the levels, it'll determine what colors you get. Now, if all these were at full, if I did all these at 255, these these would all become uh, white. You know, you mix everything together, uh, just like that, and now it's a very bright white. So uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set on the device here. I'm I'm going to set it for uh, four channel with the dimmer. Hold on a second. Okay, so I've set this for four channels. I've set the light for four channels now. And uh, if I kick this up to 255, that's not right. 255, nothing happens, obviously, because the other colors are uh, are not are not telling it to do anything. This is the master dimmer. It affects all colors equally. But if I do this, you'll notice that, again, the red gets intense and gets to here, and then it'll just drop off. Uh, like that, but if for some reason, let's say I needed this to, uh, let's say I needed this to fade up uh, to here. Hold on a second. Let me do this. So, so that gets like this. So now I needed this to fade up just the red, but then I wanted everything to fade out at a certain point. Then I would come here and I would affect this. So now I can control. I have control over the brightness of this, but then I can leave the red on and that fades out. So, and this is, again, this is only because this light has the options for this many channels. Quite frankly, you, you can do the exact same thing with the three channels you can the four, but I, th uh, when you have it, when you, the more channels you have, like this would be hooked up to a, uh, this is if you had it hooked up to a light board or something like that. So then you would have function control over this, 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 for this program, quite frankly, the three channel is fine, uh, for what you're trying to do. So. Uh, and of course, this is just with lighting. Lighting the lighting is what gives you a whole lot of options and stuff. You know, you have fog machines that are just basically on and off. So uh, that is the basics of your DMX lighting uh, situation here. Now, let's say you want to add. You can have other things, by the way. Let's insert a device here. We'll insert. Uh, let's do a, let's do a, let's do a fog jet fury. Speaking of, of, uh, those things, let's do boom like that. And here you go. There's your, there's your other channels there. Select, select. So now this has added, uh, the fog jet fury and this has chosen, uh, the DMX here as nine 
and this has changed to 16. So over on my tripar, I would have to go change the DMX channel to 16. So uh, just be aware that that might happen and might change on you randomly. <laughs> One last thing I want to go over and involves DMX here is if you are using the uh, Pico DMX controller here. Uh, you'll notice when you go here, you can't do anything. Like this is not you. you it looks like it's stuck. But you, uh, it's all you have to do is add a DMX fixture uh, to the device, and now you can control the show uh, how you could, how you can normally. Uh, everything becomes accessible to you. So uh, that uh, is just one other thing I wanted to mention because it kind of threw me, and there's nothing really in the documentation uh, that lets you know about it. So there you go. That is the basics of the DMX function in Director there. And we're gonna, we'll do another video in the future about how to use the controllers as DMX slaves and go into a little more detail about that. And uh, also one last piece of advice. If you are wiring up your uh, lights and other things to a uh, to the FlexMax or a DMX decoder and they're not coming on or, or responding, just try swapping the wires. It could just be a different wiring on the fixtures. So uh, we'll see you next time.